I think that uh, frankly uh, if there is anything there could be some uh, understatement of the uh, growth rates which we may have achieved because I think that what the current numbers frankly does and that is why the growth rate uh, some people say looks very bumped up mm -hmm. as compared because you have changed of course the year mm -hmm. of reckoning. Also I think in regard to the corporate sector data mm -hmm. the much larger coverage uh, which has now been undertaken by the extremely independent organization the central statistical uh, organization, mm. frankly, is a completely independent organization. So, I think that the data is more robust, mm. the coverage is deeper, and the GDP numbers are realistically estimating really what's going on in the economy. And, and I think that, yeah. you know, so when some people saying that you do not get the heat mm. of 7.6 uh, or 7.8 percent, part of the problem, of course, is the well known dichotomy between nominal GDP growth and uh, GDP growth numbers because it is a peculiar time mm -hmm. when nominal GDP growth uh, on account of uh, you know, wholesale price index being mm -hmm. really in the negative territory for 14 months in succession yeah. is really a, a very odd feature uh, in an otherwise different picture. But it is also corporate data which is not holding up or is not supporting the thesis that the economy is robust. Isn't it? No, but I think that the, if, you, if you look at it, the corporate data have recently picked up, credit offtake has somewhat picked up. Of course, it is lower no, than… about balance sheets. The, 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 uh, I see. Mm -hmm. the, the, well, the fact remains that uh, uh, there are these issues of stressed assets, uh, nobody can really say. Some sectors of the economy are doing exceedingly well, mm -hmm. some sectors are not doing so well. For instance, on account the steel and steel related companies are not doing so well. The, some of the companies which were really large in the area of petroleum and petroleum products, oil prices have been soft. Areas, power sector, some of the assets were really um, quite a bit stressed. The highway exposure quite a bit has been stressed. So, I think some sectors of the economy, if you look at it, are doing well and some are not. But the overall picture is certainly a much a very robust one with strong fundamentals, so 6.7.6 percent rate of growth. I think could the rate of growth could be GDP numbers could be somewhat higher even and with backed up by very strong fundamentals, low current account deficit, a tapering inflation, cost of debt coming down uh, uh, somewhat with a renewed emphasis on agriculture sector and hopefully of course the that uh, joker in the pack uh, if the monsoons are good this year, I certainly expect the growth rates to get bumped so up. Let me put the question differently then. What do you think are the key challenges ahead, particularly when we look at the 2016-17 uh, period? One I think is the uncertainty surrounding the monsoons. Uh, it is not a, I mean that is not something, it is an exogenous variable. Right. So, we, we cannot do very there much. Is, there are reports already that El Nino may not be uh, as, as uh, strong uh, as it was and therefore, we can expect uh, certainly a normal monsoon if not better than a normal right. monsoon. Second, I think on how quickly we are able to de-stress the stressed sector. Uh, you know, already there are good accounts that the highways have begun to really do well. Steel companies' profitability is beginning to look uh, somewhat better. So, how quickly are we able to de-stress the stressed assets? Third, I think that the issue of connected with it is the whole issue of the viability of the banking and financial system that if the assets get de-stressed then of course the non-performing assets come down. But apart from that there is this question of the credibility in the implementation of the banking and uh, reforms. And finally I think that the uncertainty is the ability to be able to maneuver some important legislations in both houses of parliament. Right. So, if I were to term these as operational challenges because they are all upon us right now and, and talk about strategic challenges including for instance creating jobs uh, in the nature of uh, uh, at a time when let us say uh, job creation itself is a challenge because of automation and artificial intelligence and all of that uh, plus the threat that other jobs might be taken away uh, and us wanting to create uh, or absorb 10 million uh, young people into the economy every year. Uh, what would they be? I mean, I mean this I am assuming is one strategic challenge long term, but what could be of the other Of course, ones? this is a very important strategic challenge, uh, how, to, how to improve uh, technological productivity at the same time uh, create avenues for gainful employment. And uh, it is the ingenuity that uh, with each step you get different types of jobs being created. So, the pattern of employment may change, the employment coefficients vary from sector to sector. So, but there are sectors where the employment coefficient for instance remains uh, exceptionally high. For instance, tourism is one sector which the Prime Minister has repeatedly stressed where the employment coefficient is remains very high. In the agriculture sector, the employment coefficient is high provided you can improve productivities. And I think that you said what are the other challenges? 
The other very big challenge, a very, very big challenge is really the reform of the agriculture sector holistically speaking. The contribution of agriculture to GDP has come down significantly, but the number of people who are deriving livelihood from agriculture continues to be over 50 percent. And clearly to provide gainful non-agricultural employment to so many people out of agriculture needs more orderly urbanization, problems of migration out of agriculture into urban occupation, keeping them in a manner which is socially cohesive to create manufacturing hubs which are low to medium intensive through the harmonization of skills, um, manufacturing hubs, non-agricultural gainful activity along with orderly urbanization constitutes the four of them need synergy with each other constitutes a very major challenge.